my speech, I thought I'd do it about public speaking because this is public speaking and I think it is a really important skill that all of us really have to I think, develop in the future in order to be successful. And I would just like to share my own story and maybe hi, share you some of the yeah, some of the experiences I made and maybe you take something for yourself also with you. Alright, in terms of presentations, um, you, we have that practice a lot, right? We have it through high school, we have it now here at the university, but it's often more like we have one presentation once every month and usually we ask those people for feedback which we like. So, hey, how was my speech? Amazing. That's good, right? <laughs> So that is always a problem because we don't really get feedback, also negative or constructive feedback by others. And that is why, for instance, public speaking clubs are very useful because they really help you to improve your public speaking skills. And also adding up a point to that, I think it is, we often see that people maybe have a great content, but are not such good speakers, and that results in a quite mediocre, sometimes even boring speech, or for the content would be really great. Or others are great speakers, but their content might be just not so good that time, but still they pull off to do a good show and to, in to interest people. You know, like people like Donald Trump, maybe are on the content side quite low, but we all should admit that he's a great public speaker. So what I would like to share with you just is how I got actually into this world of public speaking, why I got interested in it. In 2016, I did an internship for an investment bank and there, I got really interested in the blockchain technology. Now people talk about bitcoins and all those, these technologies. However, at that point in time, it was not so popular yet. And also what they offered at this investment bank were like educational events that like people who were really expert in the field gave a one hour presentation about a very interesting topic relevant to the industry. And I attended the first two sessions and the second session was by some portfolio manager who was really smart and he developed like a new alternative investment strategy and the content was super interesting. However, the speaker himself was like, they didn't really have the body gesture and talk really calm and in a very monotone voice and the speech could have been much more effective. And after listening to it, I also got motivated and said, hey, wow, I mean, I could also, you know, speak there and present this top blockchain topic. So I offered that and they even, um, yeah, asked me if I could do in two months time, I could do a presentation about this technology. And, well, I was nervous and I thought before I go there, I should really prepare. And I, through accident, I saw the advertisement of the Hague University Toastmasters, a public speaking club. And in this club, I, when I visited it, I was really fascinated because it's a club where you have different roles, you have a moderator, you have prepared speeches, you have grammarians, you have timers, you have art counters, you have evaluators, you have a lot, lot of different roles. So every time you come there, you take a different role and you practice speaking in front of others. And you do that usually once or every two weeks. And I think this gives you a great routine and, and getting you know used to just standing here right now in public. And I even did, on the day before the blockchain presentation, did my icebreaker speech. In the icebreaker speech, you usually introduce yourself to the club. And I was, did really well. In only six minutes, I managed to say 25 times, uh. <laughs> so, uh, hi, name is uh, Max, and um, I would like to um, tell. But it was good because I got feedback, and then on the next day, at least I could cut out the arms because I was more aware of it. And then on the day of the presentation, at the investment bank, well, it was like right now, it was like five minutes before five, and you sit there and you're like, oh, I hope some people actually come. <laughs> and then, you know, almost no one was there. But then, as soon as it turned five, people flooded in, and the whole room was full. And it was like a room like this. And I even saw some of the executives, you know those guys, where you, when you read the annual report and you see their faces, and they actually came and were sitting in the back. And my heart was really like pounding. I was really nervous but I started a presentation and really in like the third minute or so I got lost and I was like talking about technology da 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 and they're like and I, I was so happy I got I, back again on the track and continued but that was like a really tense moment because maybe for others it just was like five seconds for me it really felt like an hour and 
then when I finish, they even ask me for after a 20 minute presentation, 40 minutes more questions, you know, like really deep questions. And I think in the end, I think I did an okay job for my age, but it was also the biggest challenge I had so far. And from that moment on, I realized I really have to continue improving there because I never want to be again on that spot where you're standing here and you're so nervous, you know, that you're not enjoying anything and you're just so focused on, oh, I have to, you know, not, not I hope I don't forget anything, that, uh, you know, you get lost at some point. So I continued to host masters. And I'm now for one and a half years member of a public speaking club and I would just like to share some of the lessons and uh, experiences I made from, from being a member there. You know, I know most of us already had the communication courses, so it's not so much about how to structure speech, it's more about things you learn on the side. So the first thing I really realized was you have to accept your style of speaking. And I think everyone here has their own individual style of speaking. And it often, also for me, it happens that I see guys like Tony Robinson or some actors and like, wow, they're great speakers, if I could take or speak like them. But then I look at myself, if I you know, see myself in the video and I realize, oh, not so much. But I think that is also one of the links to learn, to learn to accept just the way I speak. And of course, you can improve yourself, you can improve your, stre your strengths, your weaknesses, but you cannot change your character. And I think that's important to focus on, you know, like stay who you are, but continue on your strengths and who you are. And not yes. good, good. <laughs> Another? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Another thing I also learned was that you really learn first how to speak, then you learn how to speak more, and then you should learn how to speak less. And I think that is often what we realize that people are in public events and they're just waffling and waffling and waffling and talking too much, others talk too short. And it's about learning how to find the right balance. For instance, um, I did competitions, and after the, we had to speak, you know, the people were quite exhausted. You know, you just do six, six speeches in a row, and then they brought the ballots out and counted them, so we had time for some interviews. So me and the other candidates were standing there. And they asked the first guy, just a simple question. And he literally talked for three minutes about the problem of global warming. And yes, it's serious, but people don't want to hear like a three-minute speech now. And Next person, next person, next person, and it came to me. You know, and then I was standing there, and some people were like really like looking at me like with these eyes. And she asked me the question, like, oh, you gave a speech about your grandfather. What would, he, what would he have said if he would have been here right now? And I thought, well, I, and I just said, time is money. Let's get to the, the winners. You know, like, because I really want to push it forward. And I think that's also what we have to learn is when you have to find the right moment to sometimes also cut a point and get it on the point and be faster and not just, you know, extend uh, the time too much, like I'm doing right now. The other things I also learned in general was that you really have to practice. You know, it's not about public speaking, it's not about just practicing once or twice, it's really about continuously. Continuously standing in front of people and speaking like here. That's also why I decided to, to, to join here because this is a great experience. It is a great challenge for you to stand in front of others and speak and here is also not so much pressure. I mean, I can you know, mess up if I want, wouldn't be too bad. For instance, another story I had of practicing was I last year had an interview for one of the large audit companies in Cologne. And after the interview, I was wearing a suit and a tie, a proper businessman. And there was, a, in front of the Köln Dom, this big church, was a demonstration by German socialist Yao, you know, like punks and those people. And there was a crowd of like 200 and they gave speeches, but they didn't have music in between. So they looked for someone to fill some time. So I thought, okay, I say something. So I went there, I took the mic and I talked for five minutes about why Germany should not export weapons to war zones. And they clapped and then I just left the stage again. And afterwards I just laughed. I mean, it was a funny experience. And I think that is also what you then seek for, you know, seek for opportunities where you can speak and just just, you know, to, to challenge yourself and uh, to grow. I think also what you, what we also have to learn, just like little things like here, come prepared. You know, we went here a bit earlier, we set up the whole stage, but also advices are, for instance, take the moment how it is. For instance, sometimes PowerPoint doesn't work. I 
And then people get super stressed and they, they start, you know, trying to fix the PowerPoint for 10 minutes and you guys are sitting there and they're like, yeah, come on, you know, so start doing it. So better idea, ask someone else, can you please fix it to me and just continue with the speech or something. Like really learning how to react to the moment. I think that was what Toastmaster helped me to do. Then, I think, now let's get just to some benefits of public speaking clubs. First of all, you get a great network because most people are there have quite interesting jobs. Like you have people who have to speak on a daily basis. So usually it's like people in higher positions who studied. So you really meet a bunch of very interesting people. Other benefits are you learn how to give better feedback because often we are either too positive when we give feedback or too negative. But for instance, Toastmasters, one of the concepts is you like the sandwich method, you give a positive uh, comment, then a negative one, and then you end with a positive note. So like learning also those things. Or just like, uh, like we saw right now with Marta, how to moderate an event. That's also very important, right? You know, how to make it smoothly, how to make everyone feel, feel welcome, not awkward. I think those are also challenges that we can learn through public speaking. So to sum up, I would just like to ask you a question because that gets me to my last point there. What I said so far, is there something that you've said, okay, that this I will remember from that speech? Something, what would you remember, yeah? Yeah, to, to keep true to, keep true to yourself was the... Good, yeah. Join those muscles. Join those, okay. Also not to speak a lot, but keep it concise. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, like, to know when to uh, talk, like, elaborate a point and then two minutes and then go to the next one. Great. Mm -hmm. Also, the, like, you're very calm, that's a great ability, like, you don't get nervous and you don't push tension towards people. Mm -hmm. so that's important. And uh, thanks. And I think also for this, we it's just through practice because you get used standing in front of others. And the point I wanted to make with this is, if I give now here like a 15-minute speech, usually what happens is you're not remembering all of what I said. Maybe you remember one or two points. And also consider that when you give a speech, don't try to overload people. You know, if you give a speech for one hour, I mean, what do people really remember? You know, one, two, three things maybe. So really, when you try to give a speech, give people something. Don't expect them to remember everything, but really try to animate them. You know, to keep at least one or two thoughts because that is the most important thing about giving a speech. So to sum up, I think for me, joining a public speaking club was very interesting. I was you now you know, for one and a half years a member, and I think throughout that time, I really made good progress getting more confident from standing in front of others. And I think now, especially for future working life, it is uh, really helpful for all of us, you know, if we more actively start practicing it.